Yeah, good morning, Alex. It is a sobering morning here in Las Vegas. The uh, remembrances last night, the candlelight vigils, really impromptu uh, family members of the victims here uh, from Kern County that are here in Las Vegas, the family members making their way here. Uh, we attended a vigil last night at Valley Bible Fellowship Las Vegas. It's an extension of VBF in Bakersfield. Pastor Jim Cruz uh, saying yesterday morning he felt it was only the right thing to do in light of how many Kern County and Bakersfield victims were among the uh, 59 killed and the other uh, hundreds wounded. I spoke to Pastor Jim Cruz about uh, what he said to the family, uh, the family of 20 year old Bailey Schweitzer. They were in the front row of this uh, church service, visibly upset, sobbing at times. It was uh, it was a moving tribute. Uh, Pastor Cruz really talking about how fragile life is and reflecting on the moment a mother lost her daughter in an instance. Um, she was definitely standing next to her daughter when her daughter got hit. It was the news Pastor Jim Cruz never wanted to hear. One of his members, part of Valley Bible Fellowship Church in Bakersfield, among the victims in Sunday night's massacre in Las Vegas. You know, their daughter was healthy and having fun at a concert. And so this is, it just feels like a bad nightmare. 20 year old Centennial High School graduate Bailey Schweitzer gunned down as she stood next to her mom. And, uh, there's not a lot you can say uh, when they are just still it's almost like a dream to them still. I mean, this has just happened last night. It hasn't even been 24 hours yet. The family attending this candlelight vigil at VBF's Las Vegas campus, family members too upset to speak on camera. But Pastor Cruz says he was able to pray with them and pray for the two other Kern County families who've lost a loved one. There were more Bakersfield people involved in last night's incident than uh, our church's Las Vegas people. Uh, my heart hurts. Another victim from Bakersfield, Jack Beacon, who was attending the concert with his wife. According to family, as gunfire erupted, Beacon fell onto his wife to protect her. He would later die at the hospital from his injuries. And 55-year-old Victor Link, a Shafter native, attending the concert, also killed in the barrage of gunfire. More than 50 Kern County residents attending the Route 91 Music Festival, including Lisa Price and Faustino Gonzalez, who recalled the moments they realized they were in the direct path of the gunman. You know, and then he said, you know, we, we can't stay here, we have to go. And thank God for it because I, I just, panicked and I just stood there and froze and so he grabbed my arm and Gonzalez grabbing his girlfriend and getting them to safety. People just started running and we were just trying to find a way out. And then there's Samantha Sawyer who attended the concert with her friends. Her cell phone rolling as she captured the terrifying moments. Bullets raining down around them. He started shooting more and everybody was ducked down and so everybody finally took off and went to the left side. They were able to get out safely. I can't think of a better time to be a light to the world. Meanwhile, at Valley Bible, a prayer for the families of Kern County and beyond that some good can come out of this horrible tragedy. Don't be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. And that's really what I'm standing on as we move through this darkness. Yeah, and some of that good we saw in Kern County yesterday, people lining up at Houchin Blood Bank uh, to give donations. As uh, Mike and Alex mentioned earlier today, they need platelets more than anything. Also here in Vegas, lots of people uh, lining up for blood and uh, and platelet donations as well. We saw at an impromptu vigil at the uh, University of Las Vegas Medical Center, dozens and dozens of pallets of, uh, of water bottles and food were brought in for the victims here that'll be uh, staying at the hospitals, the families making their way here. And as we mentioned earlier, the Kern County impact of this, nine people still Still uh, in area hospitals here, including our Bakersfield police officer, Aaron Mahanke, shot in the hip. We're told he is uh, with his Bakersfield Police Officer Association uh, members as well. Uh, police Chief Lyle Martin yesterday in Bakersfield at a prayer rally remembering uh, what uh, Officer Mahanke went through and uh, offering the condolences to the family. As this second day of recovery and investigation continues here, lots of heartache back in Kern County as families making their plans here in Las Vegas to transport their loved ones back home. That's the latest here in Las Vegas. Reporting live, Tim Callahan, 23 ABC. Back to you in the studio. All right, Tim, thank you. Here locally, vigils were also held across town remembering the victims that died and those who were injured. 23 ABC's Faven K joining us live downtown where one of those vigils was held last night. Faven? 
Mike, I'm standing in front of the Liberty Bell where last night hundreds of Kern County residents band together to honor local shooting victims in that Las Vegas massacre. Out of the 59 people killed on Sunday night, three of those from right here in Kern County. Bailey Schwartz, Schweitzer, Jack Beaton, and Victor Link traveled to Las Vegas to enjoy concerts from their favorite country music artists, but would never return home. Last night, people from all di from different backgrounds paid their respects and prayed for those affected by this horrific tragedy. Mayor Karen Go also in attendance, providing comforting words for our community during this difficult time. Many people we spoke with telling us that they simply wanted to show solidarity and support for those families that are in mourning, those who are recovering, and those that are still in shock after witnessing the deadliest massacre in U.S. history. In our community, we've lost a couple of individuals who were at the concert. Uh, we felt like we wanted to show our support uh, for the lives that were lost, not only for those that will be lost in Bakersfield, but the many more that were impacted and lost their lives or injured and their families. More vigils are planned for those victims throughout the week. We'll, of course, have all that information on our website, turn to 23.com, as well as our 23 ABC Facebook page. Live in downtown Bakersfield, I'm Faven K, 23 ABC. And people around the world are in mourning and in solidarity with Las Vegas. We see here the Eiffel Tower actually tweeted tonight, last night from midnight. I will turn my lights off to pay tribute to the victims of the Las Vegas attacks. And we also see Tel Aviv City Hall illuminated in the American flag in solidarity with Las Vegas. And right here in the U.S., the Empire State Building was dark last night with the victims of the Las Vegas massacre. And I'm learning that this little orange ring is actually to promote gun awareness. So the entire Empire State Building is dark except for that tiny little orange ring. And of course, for the rest of the morning, we will keep tracking what is happening after those Las Vegas attacks. And in these days after this attack, your children may be struggling with this tragic news. Well, 23 ABC's Veronica Costa has the best ways to speak with your kids about events like the Las Vegas massacre. Veronica. Jada, you're completely right. Talking to your kids when hate makes headlines is a conversation many parents have trouble even starting. Now, some say it's a conversation worth having, though, especially if your children are asking questions and tuned into what's going on around the world. I would be um, honest with your children, not shying away from telling them what happened, but also gauging what they need to hear. So what they seem like they're seeking information about or what their fears or worries may be. Ray said it's also important as a parent to do things like keep your routine going and this will let your little ones see that you're coping with events like massacres so that they can also learn to cope as well. In studio, I'm going to send it back to you, Mike. All right, Veronica, thank you. The search continues this morning for information on the gunman in the Las Vegas shooting, and that search is happening part of it in Kern County. Police were seen searching the home and former homes of the gunman Stephen Paddock on Monday in California City. California City Police visiting homes near Jacaranda Avenue and 87th Street, where Paddock may have lived some two decades ago. The current owner of the home is in disbelief, telling 23ABC yesterday that they bought the property in 2007 but never knew who owned it before them. Police say they cannot confirm that the owner was the same Stephen Paddock as the gunman in Las Vegas. Now, if you have any information on his supposed time in Cal City, perhaps you live next to him, you're encouraged to contact the Cal City Police Department. Our coverage of the shooting continues throughout the morning and online on our social media and mobile and tablet apps. All right, right now let's uh, bring Elena Rusk back in now, get another look at what's going on outside today. Yeah, really calm and quiet, which you can't see here on our storm shield Doppler is a fresh northwest breeze coming in. So that leaves us pretty cool right now, I'm calling it sweater weather to start off our morning. 60 in Bakersfield with moderate air quality, but up in the mountains, it's only in the 30s, close to freezing for Tatchby and Fraser Park. At noon today, if you want to take the dog to the park, fantastic there. 76, maybe you have plans to have lunch outside. The kids playing outside after school today at 4 p.m. will have a a breezy high of 80 degrees and then later on tonight around dinner time falling back to 70 the sun setting just after 630 and then we will continue to cool down to those 50s overnight tomorrow is one more beautiful day but then we really have to warm things up i'll show you that in our seven days next all right thanks elena coming up we're continuing to follow that deadly shooting out of las vegas find out how you can pay your respects to the victims this week Plus, the president is headed to Puerto Rico today following Hurricane Maria. We've got everything that you, you can expect of his visit 
uh, coming up today. 5-11 now on this Tuesday. You're watching 23 ABC. Good morning, Kern County. It is 514. As we take a look outside at our traffic, some of our cameras, even though it's dark, showing you that it's busy. We have a line of headlights there at the 5 down near Taft Highway. Same thing up at the 65, but it's flowing freely here. This is the White Lane overpass there over at the 99 here in the heart of town. So Bakersfield, 60 degrees right now, but up in Delano, Button Willow, even the Kern River Valley, only in those 40s. So you need to give your car a little time to warm up. Tatchby and Fraser Park, you're going to need some gloves to drive this morning because you're only at 36 at this hour. Those passes are seeing a little bit of a breeze later this afternoon, but not affecting traffic for the morning commute. And taking a live look right now from. I'm thinking this is Edwards Air Force Base where the president is uh, preparing to leave for Puerto Rico. He is headed there uh, to take a look at the damage. And now here is a live picture from the Mandalay Bay. A uh, moment of silence in Las Vegas after the strip turned dark overnight. And throughout the morning, we'll be bringing you moments like this, uh, pictures like this, tributes to the hundreds of people that were hurt and dozens who lost their lives in the shooting. Uh, as we mentioned, the headliner, Jason Aldean, who was on stage performing at the time that the uh, gunman opened fire, uh, wrote out on Instagram this morning that his heart aches for the victims and their families, and he pleaded for people to stand together and stop the hate. We'll continue to bring you updates out of Las Vegas. 23 ABC's Tim Callahan standing by live. Uh, he'll be coming back in about 15 minutes with more as this shooting obviously has had its impact, not just in Las Vegas, here in Kern County, but around the globe. And tomorrow, the community is invited to attend a prayer service for the victims at St. Elizabeth and Seton Catholic Church on Rainer Road. That prayer service is set to begin at 530 at night and last around 30 minutes. And hundreds of Las Vegas residents stood in line for hours to give blood in the aftermath of that mass shooting. Here at home, Houching Community Blood Bank says they're in need of platelets this morning. This comes after dozens of people came to help donate blood yesterday. Officials with the blood bank say they're going to send uh, what they have on their shelves as soon as it's requested and that they are at the top of the list since we are so close to Las Vegas. A San Diego Marine is being credited with saving dozens of lives after he reportedly ran towards the gunfire in Vegas, risking his life to rescue concert goers. Taylor Winston said he knew that workers share festival trucks and usually leave the keys inside of them. So he took advantage of that and found one with keys in it. Pulling the injured inside the back of the truck, he then managed to save it about 30 people. Now, Winston says he doesn't consider himself a hero, but the people he saved are saying otherwise. New this morning, Bakersfield police investigating a shooting in East Bakersfield that sent one person to the hospital. This all happened about 840 last night on Gorill Street near South King Street and Potomac Avenue. When officers arrived, they say they found a man who was suffering from several gunshot wounds. He was taken to the hospital where he's listed in stable condition. Now, there is no suspect information at this time. The investigation is ongoing. Before President Trump heads to Las Vegas to meet victims and their families, he'll head to Puerto Rico today to see the extent of Hurricane Maria's destruction firsthand. The president will also sit down with the governors of Puerto Rico and the U.S. Virgin Islands. Many Puerto Ricans still struggling and feel forgotten. Leaders there say 5% have power and less than half of the population has clean drinking water. Now let's bring back Chief Meteorologist Elena Russ for another check of our forecast. That's right, and you can see up to the north, we have a bit of a disturbance providing some showers up there. We do have the possibility to see a disturbance bringing some snow to the high country in Yosemite. Nothing for us here at home. We're going to have high thin clouds, if anything. I think this far south is just a fresh, cool breeze coming on shore. And that does leave us quiet at this hour. You see those winds picking up over those southern mountains. But it's leaving us about the same here in Bakersfield that we were yesterday. More pronounced cooling down into the desert. China Lake down 15 degrees from this time 24 hours ago, keeping them in the 40s at this hour. That's the same for Mojave and Rosemond. 36 in Tatchby and Fraser Park. 60 in Bakersfield, but that's the warm spot. Loose air quotes for the valley. Look at Delano. 
only 42. That's colder than Isabella at 49 right now. So as that sunshine is out there later today, we have a fresh breeze coming through a high of 80 in Bakersfield, Lamont, base of the grapevine, but 70s for everybody else here on the valley floor and up into the Kern River Valley. 66 in Tatchby, 64 in Fraser Park. West northwest winds, though, keeping it a little breezy, about 15 to 25 miles an hour today. And that keeps Mojave at 77, further away from the wind, mid 80s for Ridgecrest and Cal City. So looking ahead, high pressure starts building from the Pacific for the end of the week. You see by Friday, that means 88. We're holding on to those warm temperatures through the weekend and much of next week. As of right now, though, it looks like we're just shy of those 90s. So Kern River Valley, mid 70s today and tomorrow, mid 80s this weekend. Tatchby and Fraser Park, 60s today, as I showed you, but cold overnights drop into those 30s. Back to the upper 70s this weekend with lows in those 40s, which feels a bit better. Uh, here we are again in the aftermath of another uh, terrible, inexplicable, shocking and painful tragedy, this time in Las Vegas, which happens to be my hometown. Coming up, Jimmy Kimmel speaking out last night over about the deadly mass shooting in Las Vegas. We'll tell you who he's calling out this morning. And I will have more about the dozens of Kern County residents who were in Las Vegas during that massacre. It's all coming up next on 23 ABC. Five twenty three right now and taking a live look right down. Well, this is Las Vegas Boulevard right outside the Mandalay Bay, which remains shut down and will remain shut down uh, for some time here as police continue their investigation into ye yesterday's mass shooting uh, coming up at the bottom of the hour. 23 ABC's Tim Callahan is standing by to bring us uh, more information on the aftermath and the the vigils that have been going on to remember those injured and those lives lost. And Mike, on that note, we now know that dozens of Kern County residents attended this fest and were even there during that massacre. 23 ABC's Morgan Wheeler was able to speak with some people who were willing to share their story publicly, but some people did speak to us on our Facebook page telling us about the devastation that they saw and what they encountered there, saying they were lucky to be alive. Some residents actually saying that they witnessed people getting shot directly next to them. They were covered in blood. They ran out to safety. Our own 23 ABC sees Leah Freeman was there and told us her uh, her story of how she had to run out with her sister to find safety. You see here one resident who spoke with us via FaceTime and you can see this full story on our Facebook page on and on turn to 23.com and we also have a list posted on turn to 23.com and it's a compilation of a list of everyone who's reached out to us on social media th people that we've confirmed that we know that were at that festival and were there during that massacre. Again, this is not a full Full confirmed list of who was there and who was injured, but we do have a list of people who were sharing with us who were there. Again, if you want to let us know that you were there and you were okay, you can send us a message on social media and we can add you to this list. If you want to check this out, it's on turn to 23.com. Again, sending prayers and thoughts to all of those affected at the Las Vegas attack. In other news, Jimmy Kimmel has spoken out following the violence in Vegas, criticizing politicians who oppose gun control measures. We have a major problem with gun violence in this country, and I guess they don't care. And if I'm wrong on that, fine, do something about it, because I'm sick of it. And, um, you know, I want this to be a comedy show. I hate talking about stuff like this. I just want to, you know, laugh about things every night. But that, it seems to be coming uh, increasingly difficult lately. Kimmel went on to say that it, quote, feels like someone has opened a window into hell, unquote. At one point, he put up a photo of the 56 U.S. senators, there it is, who following last year's Orlando shooting, voted against closing loopholes that allow people to buy weapons without background checks. He went on to pray for the victims, their families and friends. Kimmel has previously made headlines, as you know, with his political voice earlier this year. He spoke out about health care in the wake of his son's health battle, saying he wished he could return to working on for laughs on his show, as you just heard, but feels that's an impossible task in recent months. Today at 23 ABC's Jessica Harrington will be the MC at the Links for Life Walk. It's being held at 11 a.m. until 1 p.m. at Yokitz Park. It's all in an effort to kickstart Breast Cancer Awareness Month. Attendees will walk to celebrate breast cancer victims, survivors, and those currently going through treatment. In honor of and in memory of names will be displayed along the path.
And there's still much more to come in our next half hour. Coming up, we're continuing to follow that deadly shooting out of Las Vegas. We have more on the vigils held for victims. Plus, you still have time to help those impacted by the shooting. We'll tell you what they need and how you can take part in it. 527 on this Tuesday. This is 23 ABC. Good morning, Kern County. You're watching 23 ABC News at 5. Las Vegas and the nation in mourning, remembering those killed and the hundreds who were injured and whose lives were changed forever. This morning, investigators continued their search for a motive. And good morning. Thanks for staying with 23 ABC News at 530. I'm Mike Hardy. I'm Alex Montes, and we're going to start things off this morning by sending things over to Chief Meteorologist Elena Russ for a check of our forecast out there a bit cool. Yeah, it feels really nice to me at least. I like it cool. We're at 60 degrees. For those of you who like it a little warmer, this afternoon's for you. You can see those clear skies on our storm shell Doppler climbing up to 76 by lunchtime, topping out at 78, 79 this afternoon, briefly at 80, and then right back down. This comes with moderate air quality and increasing winds. I'll talk about those in a minute, but that's for later this afternoon. Right now, there's a bit of a wind over those southern mountains. It's not impacting you down onto the grapevine. The 58 doing okay as well. But let's take a quick look down at the 5 and 99 junction where you see it's starting to get a little busy. All right, thank you. Now on to yesterday's mass shooting. The Las Vegas PD, Clark County Sheriff's Department, the FBI, and numerous other agencies are all working together to try and figure out the suspect's motive for yesterday's shooting. Police say Paddock had already killed himself when they entered his room as he was firing from the Mandalay Bay. Now inside his room, officials say they found a total of 23 guns. Investigators say he hammered through the windows of the Mandalay Bay on the 32nd floor before firing down on the crowd below. At his home along the Nevada-Arizona border, investigators found another 19 firearms, thousands of rounds of ammunition, and explosives. Investigators are also tracing money that was sent overseas. And this just in, I think this is kind of a, just a really uh, a glaring uh, comment from yesterday. A trauma surgeon at a local Las Vegas hospital said, quote, I had no idea who I was operating on all day yesterday. We were just trying to keep people from dying, unquote. And this morning we have team coverage of the shooting in Las Vegas. 23 ABC's Faven K is live at the Liberty Bell with more on how Kern County is remembering those local victims killed. 23 ABC's Jada Montemorano is standing by in the Live Center with reaction, but let's begin with 23 ABC's Tim Callahan in Las Vegas live this morning where he spoke to a pastor who held vigil for the Las Vegas victims. Tim? Yeah, good morning, Mike and Alex. That uh, that vigil held last night, impromptu vigil from Pastor Jim Cruz of Valley Bible Fellowship here in Las Vegas, an extension of VBF back in Bakersfield. He said yesterday morning he felt called to do it, knowing just how many Kern County families were impacted as the day went on and the news developed of how many lives were lost, three lives from Kern County and several people injured here in this attack uh, with our Bakersfield police officer still in the hospital. We attended that vigil last night at VBF and there was lots of prayers and uh, the family of 20 year old Bailey Schweitzer in the front row being consoled by Pastor Jim and others as they prayed for that family. We also were at the University of Las Vegas Medical Center last night where an impromptu vigil started there. We captured the powerful moment that people started to gather and pray. Take a look. We thank you for this gathering today, oh God, uh, of our brethren and our sisters, oh God. Uh, that That powerful scene at University Medical Center in Las Vegas this evening, uh, yesterday evening, I should say, where the majority of those injured after the shooting in Mandalay Bay were taken. Now, several pastors saying prayers with family and friends of those hurt. They participated in a candlelight vigil outside the main entrance. Uh, as we mentioned, there are uh, several people injured in Kern County. We're not sure if they were taken there to that hospital. We do know our officer, Bakersfield Police Officer Aaron Mahanke, is at another location here in the Valley. The hospital busy as uh, truckloads of donations we captured 
captured that coming in every minute, dropping off water, food and other supplies and hundreds of cases of water, a table overflowing with food donations and blood and plasma donations here in Las Vegas still needed. We mentioned earlier uh, in Kern County, they're needing plasma donations as well at Houchin Blood Bank. You can make that donation and make a difference as the second full day of this investigation takes place. Many families in Kern County still here. Uh, Jack Beaton, the uh, second victim uh, beacon, the, the second victim in Kern County. We're told the family is here in Las Vegas, uh, standing by uh, as they make preparations. And uh, that third victim, Victor Link from Shafter, uh, also killed here in this massacre. The vigils will continue, no doubt, today. We hope to catch up with Bakersfield people here uh, impacted by this uh, tragedy. We'll bring you the latest all throughout the morning and all throughout the day. For now, reporting live in Las Vegas, I'm Tim Callahan. We'll send it back to you, Jada, in the studio with a lot of the social media reaction, lots of people talking online this morning. Thank you, Tim. Yes, a lot of people have been talking about this since the first day. We also know a lot of vigils were happening here in Kern County last night, as well as the ones in Las Vegas. But something new that 23 uh, that ABC News just shared and we will report this on is the Route 91 Harvest Festival have now released their own statement about this attack. They said on behalf of the entire Route 91 Harvest family, we are completely devastated by what happened Sunday, our deepest sympathies go out to those injured and deceased and their loved ones. Senseless violence has claimed the souls of our fans and we have little in the way of answers. Our eternal gratitude goes out to the LVPD, emergency service, security guards and fans for their selfless acts. They end this post by saying we will not let hate win over love. We will not be defeated by senseless violence. We will persevere and honor the souls that were lost because it matters. And talking to children about something that, like this mass shooting is something many parents struggle with doing. I, we spoke to someone who shared some tips on how to face the conversation head on. Yeah, Alex, that's right. When massacres like the one in Vegas end up broadcasted all around you and your family, it may be hard to explain this to your little, little ones, but experts say sitting down and actually having that conversation may be vital for your children and helping them learn to deal with these kinds of events. Now, we spoke to an expert who shared some insight on how parents can go about having these kinds of conversations. Really just allowing them the time to play and to express those fears or worries, um, and then drawing um, asking them questions about what they want to know, what they're worried about. Also said parents can also give their kids time and space to think and not forcing them to talk right away could be extremely helpful as well. In studio, I'm going to send it back to you guys. Hi, Veronica, thank you. For those of you who are still looking for a way to help, the Houchin Blood Bank does need your donations. Houchin says they're in need of platelets, specifically platelets this morning. Now this comes after dozens of you came down to help donate blood at their Bolt House Drive and Truxton Avenue locations. Officials said they're going to send what they have on the shelves as soon as they get the request and that they're at the top of the list since we're so close given the proximity. Officials also say they are set right now for blood. Blood only has a 42 day shelf life, so they've got enough right now. Platelets are what they really need this morning and they're asking not too many people to come in and donate blood now. Rather, if you haven't yet, wait, wait a little while, maybe a week or two and then go in once once the shelves begin to get bare. Now stick with 23 ABC. We continue to follow the very latest in Las Vegas. We'll have updates for you as they occur about the victims of the shooting and those impacted not only here in Kern County, but around the globe. We'll have live coverage on the air till 7 a.m. this morning. Then Good Morning America picks it up in Las Vegas live. You can and also check out the stories we've already done online on our social media uh, platforms and our tablet apps. All right, and let's shift gears here a little bit, talk about our weather because it's still dark outside, but you can see that our storm shell Doppler shows that it's completely clear, which you can't see here. A little bit of a breeze kicking up, especially for our friends down over the Fraser Park and Grapevine areas where we do have that wind funneling in from the north. So with that, it's picking up to about 16 miles an hour. I want you to take it easy there on the pass. We're able to get through. It is cold up there, only 36 in Fraser Park, 32 back to the freezing mark for Tatchby, 60 here in Bakersfield. With that sunshine, though, 
low. Look at later today. A breezy 80 in Bakersfield, 74 your high in Isabella. Those mid 60s in Fraser Park and Tatchby. Quick look at the rest of the valley showing us some upper 70s for places like Oildale Taft up into Delano and the Kern River Valley, including Kernville. That 66 in Tatchby is pretty nice. Lebec though 61 and down into our desert. Still some 80s for Cal City and Ridgecrest. All right, Lena, thank you. Vigils popping up in communities all across the country and here in town to remember the victims that died and those who were injured. 23 ABC's Faven K joining us live downtown, where one of the vigils for those killed and injured in Las Vegas were held. Faven? Mike, while people across the nation are grieving this terrible tragedy, really, uh, folks here in Kern County are really feeling it as dozens of local residents were at that Route 91 Country Music Festival when shots rang out. Now, of those 59 people killed in Sunday night's attack, three of them from right here in Kern County, Bailey Schweitzer, Victor Link, and... Jack Beaton, excuse me, all traveled to Las Vegas to enjoy concerts from their favorite country music artists, but would never return home. The, then here at the Liberty Bell, people from all different backgrounds came to pay their respects and pray for everyone affected by this horrific tragedy. Mayor Karen Go also in attendance, comforting, providing comforting words for our community during this difficult time. Many people we spoke with telling us that they simply wanted to show solidarity and support for those families that are in mourning those who are recovering and those that are still in shock after witnessing the deadliest mass shooting in U.S. history. My heart hurts and it breaks and I am extremely numb today. It's kind of the only word I can think of to describe is numb. I keep waiting to get a phone call that she's coming home or... More vigils, prayer services, and memorials are planned throughout the week. Uh, we'll, of course, uh, provide the information for all of those on our website, turn to 23.com, as well as our 23 ABC Facebook page, live in downtown Bakersfield. Guys, I'm going to send it back to you in the studio. All right, thank you, Fabian. Coming up, we are continuing our coverage of the massacre on the Vegas Strip. 59 people killed at that country music festival. Details on where the investigation is up next. Good morning, Kern County. It's 544, and as we take a look across the entire county, you're seeing no big problems out there with our road weather index, no significant winds, no low-hanging clouds, which we can start to get this time of year. Not quite fog season just yet. That's next month in November. So look at the visibility. They're doing just fine at the 5 and the 119 camera. Here in Bakersfield, all of those major highways and the big city streets are flowing along freely as well. I'm not seeing any crashes, but we are trying to get a couple little touches of slowing as the morning commute kicks off. And we have our 23 ABC team over in Las Vegas right now, and we're learning from them. Las Vegas is not what it usually is. Usually bright, usually bustling. Today, quiet and dark. We see a photo here from last night. 23 ABC's Chloe Nordquist has been taking photos of what Las Vegas looks like completely dark on the strip. And we see the billboards at each of the hotels saying our prayers for the victims, our gratitude for those first responders. So this is what we're seeing on the strip. And going into this